Um, I'm going to read uh, a couple new pieces, uh, something from the book, and then um, my piece from the tour. Um, this is new and strange. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Gertrude Stein exhibit last week. So. New and strange is good. <laughs> Things to take with us. I would want a bag of sugar. We can practice restraint by eating one grain per day. Could a person even taste one grain of sugar on the end of her fingertip? She could if it was her job. <laughs> then when the bag is empty, we can use it for shelter or tear out the inner lining and write on it. What will we write? Sweet things. A good mattress. We are not so young anymore. We need a good mattress. I do believe that the universe provides. When I needed nothing, I had nothing. Now that I need things, I am able to acquire them. I only hope I am not judged too harshly by those who still need nothing. A dictionary is more important than a comb, that is certain. But a comb is so lightweight, there is no need to jettison it in favor of more important things. A dictionary, however. I'm afraid my ceramic knives will be useless as they require professional sharpening. <laughs> yes, of course, a suicide kit. You're so practical, darling. <laughs> when we need nothing, we will have nothing. The mommy is no longer able to get pregnant. Therefore, the daddy must impregnate the daughter if the human race is to continue. This is so distasteful, they cannot speak of it and tacitly postpone the decision at least until the son reaches puberty and there will be options. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> This next piece is called um, Dear Maria Schneider. Do people know who Maria Schneider is? No. She was um, an actress, a French actress, who died this year of cancer. Um, she was in, she played opposite Marlon Brando in Last Tango in Paris. That was her most famous role. Dear Maria Schneider, when I start typing the letters of your name into the Google box and the engine does its work, the first commonly searched for phrase that appears is simply your name. Right below that, the second most commonly searched for phrase is Maria Schneider Butter, <laughs> followed by Maria Schneider Butter Scene. I am so naive, I didn't understand at first what Maria Schneider Butter could possibly mean, <laughs> though I'd just seen Last Tango in Paris, the film in which your character is anally raped by Marlon Brando's character using a finger full of butter for lube. That scene is almost unwatchable because everything it depicts is actually happening. The rape scene wasn't in the script. You didn't want to do it, but were browbeaten into it. Your tears are not the tears of a woman being raped, but of an actress being humiliated. No effort was made to have it look like actual penetration is occurring in the scene. As anyone who's ever engaged in anal sex will tell you, the angle is improbable, <laughs> if not impossible. It's as if the scene were directed by schoolboys with no knowledge of anatomy. I'm reminded here of the first time a certain boy put his hand down my pants, his first time, not mine, and kept pressing his fingers against my pubic bone, looking for the hole he was so convinced would be there, where it really ought to have been in the perfect logic of his adolescent mind, corresponding in mirror-like symmetry to the placement of his cock that he never thought to reach lower between my legs and how something as immaterial as his ignorance could produce something material on me, a bruise where his fingers jabbed. So, like porn directed by virgins, the scene doesn't even approach realism. 
Maybe it doesn't have to because it was made in 1972 to appeal to people who didn't know any better, for whom the very idea of anal sex was enough to titillate them all the way to the box office. People whose idea of rape is sex that makes a woman cry a little, preferably without screwing up her face. Who are these hypothetical people that they have had so many movies made for them? If I watch enough movies, will I become one of them? <laughs> what I didn't realize while watching that scene, Maria, was how much it ruined your life and career. You wouldn't do nude scenes after that and lost a lot of roles. You couldn't eat in a restaurant in Paris without some jackass having a ramekin of butter sent over to you on a tray. When really any embarrassment should have fallen on Brando, whose idea the scene purportedly was. He's the one lying on top of you, his pathetic butt cheeks squirming in his chinos as he fake grinds into you. He's so gross in that movie, so saggy and pallid. You can see the pancake on his face. I know he's supposed to be so great, but I always think he's just floridly overacting. <laughs> Men who won't even show their bare asses on film while women walk around bravely naked shouldn't be allowed to dine in peace or have long, successful acting careers when you were tormented. I guess I thought things were different in France. Life, as you know, is a series of ever more profound disappointments. <laughs> Maria, I need to stop Googling you now, because whatever article I'm reading seems to have an ad for butter next to it. <laughs> and I know it's just the robot ad generator pulling words from the text and free associating, but I wish everyone, even robots, would be just a bit more goddamn sensitive now that you are dead from cancer at 58. Sincerely, Sarah Fran Wisby. <laughs> I'm going to read the, um, the fuck piece from the book. Um, thanks to Britta for opening the word fuck up for the evening. What did you say? The word fuck it wants to be... Longs to be held longs lovingly. Longs to be held lovingly. The quintessential Anglo-Saxon word, fuck, starts soft and ends hard, and when said properly, leaves the mouth in perfect shape to receive penetration. Speaking the word is a form of foreplay, an incantation of things beyond our control. The front teeth brace themselves against the lower lip, while the lungs force air between them. To some, the F sound conjures rabbits, stupid and weak-hearted. Others admire their softness and famed prolificacy. Shifting into lower gear, the jaw goes slack and juts slightly forward, grazing hunger and privileging the bottom lip, sensuous, over the top lip, strict. Then comes a hard knock from the entrance to the throat, like a brute hurling a bone against the wall of its cave. For its mirror sound, see cuff. A fuck spoken backwards can be a sharp blow or an instrument for encircling. Too much emphasis has been placed on the F and the K. In fact, some people spell the word F blank blank K, <laughs> as Hebrews are compelled to write the word God with a dash for the O, some things being too holy to be fully revealed. Vowels are rightly feared for their ability to shake the whole body if sustained for any length of time. Let us now give in to the holy center of the fuck, the uh, <laughs> uh, I couldn't keep it up myself. A groan, a rumbled sigh, an eternal plummeting. And, uh, and now, um, the Rome. The Rome, I was so lucky to get the Rome.
Thank you, whoever allowed me to draw that name from the envelope. The Rome was a Russian coal ship, hulked between, hulked, what kind of a word is that I'm using? <laughs> hulked, um, d broken up and sunk, right? Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, between 1857 and 1869, and discovered in 1994, the BART tunnel passes through her. Picture me skewered on a moving beam of light through which you travel like a blinkered thought in the mind. Try to hold your mind open. Pinpoint the moment you pass through me. A textural shift in the ahistoric dark. Here's a hint. Your cell phones don't work inside me. Every six minutes, you enter through a hole in my dorsal flank and exit through my right shoulder. I mean, starboard prow. Your light precedes you on gilded prongs. Then you're in me like a breath. And a voice calls out that word it knows, that gleam song, Embarcadero. Over the years, I've come to think of it as your name. At first, I thought I knew you. At first, I thought my sailors had come home, bearing trinkets to fill my hold that hauled black troves of combustible earth to fuel the whims that took them from me, or else to curl up inside me trinketless, destitute, and ashamed. But I should have known by the size of your drill, you weren't looking for me, only through me. Your velocity betrays your modernity. You are so much of your century, and I of mine, that it is a sort of miracle, this intersection, Maybe it's obvious that the new is always hurtling through the tunnel of a history it can neither know nor be known by. But in our case, it's nice. I like your thoughts all jammed together, going wherever you're going, in search of whatever your gold is now. Thank you very much.